Welcome to Kwame Affair Exclusive. Uh, it's been a while since I sat on the screen. Uh, I've been coming away with some videos uh, just to ensure that I keep on giving you information. But I'm here today to talk about mental health. It is very important. And then I want to talk about this phenomenon because this week the Mental Health Authority uh, was in town. Uh, journalists were trained on how to report on mental health issues. I am sure uh, you've called a mentally challenged person uh, a madman. I'm sure you've done that before. Uh, some will even call them mentally retarded. I'm sure you've used such a word before. But after that training, uh, we've got to know that there are some kind of label we give to the mentally challenged or people who have challenged with their mental health, some kind of label we give them, which is sort of a demeaning, or which doesn't encourage whatever processes they are in to recover. So uh, there is a need for us to drift away from this kind of reporting where it's a bit demeaning and then we use images which do not help. And then we don't have to strive so much to use images to depict the actualities of our stories uh, where we can do away with the videos we can do away with the pictures of uh, any mentally uh, challenged person you're dealing with in a particular story it is very good to go in that direction so it is something that i believe that the various reporters or journalists in the western region have taken a cue in that and definitely we're going to practice that but i'm here once again and then this time, I want to interact with the youth. Uh, I want to find out about the impact social media has on our mental health. Now, how are we going to do this? Definitely, I'll give you a bit of fact on mental health. And then, we'll step out there to ask few youth about their perspective when we talk about social media and the relationship it has with mental health. Now... Maybe you don't know, but globally, uh, it is estimated that 3% of the population suffer from mental health. So, I mean, the whole wide world, if you pick the population, you have about 3% suffering from mental health. That is a serious phenomenon. Now, in 2005, World Health Organization estimated that uh, of the then 21.6 million Ghanaians, 2.1 million suffered from various kinds of mental health conditions, of which 650,000 were severe. Now, I'll take you to 2008. And then a 2009, rather, a 2009 study showed 41 Ghanaians had one or another form of psychological distress. And this contributed to 70%, no, 7% of uh, our GDP loss. Now, look at it. A 2009 study showing that 41 Ghanaians had one or another form of psychological distress. And that is huge. That is a, a little bit closer to half of our population who have uh, mental distress. Now, there are levels to it. Uh, people show mental challenges in different form. Uh, for many of us, uh, we expect people to take off their clothes before we appreciate that this person has a mental challenge. That is a bit difficult. If you're looking at it from that perspective, you, must, uh, you might miss the point. Uh, what we are saying is, uh, there are levels to it. There are levels to uh, A's depression, and there are levels to B's depression. But all of us might show symptoms in one way or the other. But if we are not educated about how these conditions manifest, you get that. So uh, this is an awareness for all of us to appreciate the fact that mental illness is real. A study in 2009 indicated that 41% of Ghanaians have 41% uh, uh, of Ghanaians, yes, have one or uh, uh, one way or the other, uh, they have a, a mental challenge. Now, <laughs> as I said, I don't think that people are, uh, are non naked on the street, so everybody is fine. Uh, some people, it's off and on, it comes and it goes, it's, it's all that. If you're studying the patterns of people's behavior, you will know truly uh, if they are all right or they are not all right. And some people naturally have challenge, uh, which needs attention from a, a medical 
unit or a, a medical uh, a facility, you understand? They, they need to attend a particular medical center for them to be treated and be taking their medicine and all that. But one thing that is equally making it difficult for people to go out there and then uh, sort of get medication for their condition is the stigmatization around it. So sometimes it even becomes difficult for people to step out and then go to any medical facility or speak to somebody about a challenge he or she is going through. Now, through the program, there was a story that was shared about a doctor who was fighting so much during the COVID-19. He was very active. And then what happened was uh, he got sick. And then it was actually confirmed that it was a COVID-19. But you know, because he was treating people uh, on COVID-19, he felt that he could deal with it with ease. And so it happened that for about three days, they couldn't find a doctor. And then the sad thing was the doctor had died in his room. And then the question you ask is, uh, uh, where were the neighbors? Uh, was he living closer to any neighbor? Where were the children who was checking up on this man in the last three days? Uh, so it is very important for us to equally be checking on ourselves from time to time. You know, uh, some of us on fan or yen care, you get that. You experience some of these things. <laughs> Rest in peace, social media now, the RIP. But I mean, are they real? Uh, now, if we have love we want to show to people, uh, we should do that uh, before they, they, they take a leave of us or before their demise. You get that? Now, uh, let me get back to the, the major issue. So, after the program, this was my concern. I wanted to look at the impact of social media on people's mental health. So uh, I'm actually going to go into uh, some offices and then ask a uh, few youth around, uh, those who are actively on social media, if they believe that social media can have impact on their mental health. So let's take a listen. I'll be back. Yes, it can. There are a lot of people who spend um, close to five, four hours on social media just you know, having a look at what people are doing. So imagine uh, maybe I have a spouse or a friend, you know, they're always posting their happy life. You know, people don't really post about the depressed days and the, their bad days. We all post our happy, most of us post our happy days or our happy times on social media. So imagine you um, follow someone and you think that they are having a perfect life. It can be sometimes depressing having to go back and look at how, you know, happy they are, putting or presenting their life on social media. So I think yeah, it can, at, at a certain point, have an effect on the mental, you know, mental health or the, your mental state. So yeah, it, it does. Have you been personally affected by any posts, any comments, or anything on social media, one way or the other? Um, I have. I'm human. <laughs> I, when I do go to social media, sometimes I see people putting out their, um, articulating their thoughts either in a, um, a test or in an image or something. You know, we are all different people. We are, we are from diverse backgrounds and we do you know, have different way, ways of expressing ourselves. Sometimes I do see certain things and I'm just triggered by it. But I'm, I'm, I've come to understand that to have social media etiquette so <laughs> I'm the type of person to just look at it and then ignore it um, I know others might not have the same um, you know understanding understanding of social media etiquette and would probably um, get into a rigorous um, um, mis misunderstanding with someone in the comment section or something so yeah <laughs> I, I do think that as well okay so my opinion on social media is very you know uh, candid and straight to the point I am one person who doesn't really feel social media should be bothering you psychologically. Because I, for one, when I post something on my handles, I, I don't really pay attention to the likes and then the comment section that much. That is, as to whether people are liking it or they are interacting with whatever I'm communicating. It's always about and uh, whatever the person is interested in. Social media is just like a normal everyday life. It's just a virtual part of it. So the kind of interactions you engage in will give you that kind of response you want. If you are the kind of person who, you know, uh, get bothered about your likes and your followership, 
then you get you get problem where you didn't, you didn't need help. If you post something on social media and you are not getting traction as you want, it means maybe you are not doing it right. You are not communicating to the right audience or maybe you are not following uh, the, the, the kind of people who are interested in whatever you are posting. In Tina, you are not getting that kind of response. I always say that if you are not getting money out of whatever you are posting, if it's not a business page or you are not like a Ronaldo or a CR7 or, or a Lionel Messi, then you shouldn't bother yourself thinking too much about your likes and your followership. You know the need. It'd be simple like that. Okay. For, for me, um, I think social media can have um, a very great impact on one's mental health. Why I'm saying this is because some of the things that you see on social media are um, like they put pressure on people. For instance, when someone posts something, and um, the person goes back to check within some few minutes and sees that, oh, what I've posted, no one has liked, but um, would compare his Facebook page, what he posts there to other people's page. The person would be like, ah, why am I not getting the, those likes and those comments, nice, nice comments on my um, page? The person would feel pressurized. And then you would, um, might do other things that would want to push people to his maybe website or whatever it is. And another thing too is, it's not always about social media. Yes, sometimes our personal lives as well also counts. You might not be on social media, but your friends around you, what they have, what they um, show off to you can affect you in ways that yourself you wouldn't realize that you're going through mental stress and all that. Okay, so social media greatly affects our mental health or has an impact on our mental health. So there was, there was this research they did in 2018. In 2018, then it indicates that uh, most of us spend, we spend a lot of time so on social media and then it tends to affect our, even our academic performance because we are getting less sleep price sleep, uh, delayed sleep, you don't sleep any course, you are spending time on social media. So this can affect your performance and then it affects your mental health. And then another thing is, uh, I don't know if you've, if you've seen this, when you put stuff on social media, you're not getting the certain likes. <laughs> so you put up a photo on social media, you're not getting the likes. It comes with this, I, I think, like a depression. So that one too affects... Uh, mental health and then um, when you are not when there's a post say your friend puts up a post and then you're not even tagged in it you feel that am I being left out am I being excluded so it makes you tend to you know quell inside you you don't want to come out because even stuff's happening on social media you're not being uh, included and then the last one I would like to add is um, it brings lots of pressure the glance people put on the social media. You know, someone will put a photo, post, will post a photo on social media. You go like, wow, the person is living the life. So then it, it gives a, a, a pressure that I also want to live that kind of life. So if you're not getting the money or the finance to live that life, Charlie, you start thinking, oh, but James, uh, because people are living a, a certain kind of life there, which you are not able to live that life. So it also brings a lot of pressure which can affect your mental health. So then uh, social media, it has a lot of things that affect mental health. So these are the few things I can talk about now. All right, so these were interesting opinions from the general public. People share their views, our opinions, on the relationship that exists between social media and mental health. And then if I listen to them consistently, all of them are indicating that there is some kind of relationship between social media and our mental health. But depending on how you consume things which are shared on social media and how you allow these things to get to you, how you allow somebody's lifestyle and how he projects uh, his or her lifestyle on social media and its implication on your psychological health. So maybe there is some sort of relationship. At this point in time, I don't want to say either yes or no, but we have to go for the expect view to be able to understand how social media is having implications on people's mental health. 
Now, these aspects who will be sharing their views with us in no time are coming from the Mental Health Authority. They will help us to have a better understanding about how uh, we can even deal with some of these implications coming from social media or the social media effect, how we can deal with it. They have some interesting views to share with us. Let's take a listen. But just before we go, uh, so I don't forget, we have to all appreciate the fact that there is a Mental Health Act 2012, Act 846, and then there are a lot of provisions in this Act uh, in terms of how media is supposed to report mental health issues and the likes. And then uh, even with regards to punishment associated with when you violate somebody's right, especially a mental uh, ill person, when you violate his or her right, there is a challenge in there for you. So I'm going to read a punishment for you, and after that, we join our aspect for their views as well. So this is it. I'll read it for you. It says, what are the punishments for violations? And this is how it goes. I'm reading it for you. Violations of the law will be prosecuted. Anyone who violates the law or breaches the right of a person with mental disorder commit an offense and is liable on summary conviction to a fine of not more than 5,000 penalty units, now equivalent to 6,000 Ghana cities, or to a term of imprisonment of not more than 10 years, or to both the fine and imprisonment, into brackets, section 96. That is, you can make reference to uh, section 96. Now, we know that when you violate any person who has a mental challenge, right, there is a fine for you. There is a prison term for you. So, if your 6,000 Ghana cities is not ready, please don't go out there violating people with mental issues or people with men mental challenges. They are right. Don't go out there violating their right. I am sure that by the time we are done with this, we'll have a better understanding of a bit of mental issues, especially relating social media with mental challenges. Now, the expect are ready. Let's take their views. Well, the social media, as for the traditional media, you, the journalists and media people, are generally trained. So with, with ethics all behind you, with the one or few lapses, it's easy to correct you. But the social media, these are citizen journalists. Nobody is trained. Somebody just decides that I have the uh, camera, I have the video, I have the... Uh, 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 media, social media handle, and they comes out with anything. It becomes difficult to control them. But at the same time, too, they should understand that wherever they are, the words they use can negatively affect the listener, the reader, the hearer. Because if you use words that are stigmatizing, you are letting the person feel dehumanized, and it can even lead to a relapse of his condition. Remember, you or me, we are not far from developing mental illness. There's only a thin line. So if you treat uh, somebody who has mental illness today, who knows, tomorrow it might be your turn, my turn. So let's avoid things. Yes, the eagerness to report on the social media is encouraging, but that should not lead us to use words that could be stigmatizing. Prof, I want to find out how pictures, that is images, how videos and how people are showcasing themselves on the social media equally contributing to mental health yeah images we've said that words have a lot of impact and positive words like uh, happiness or love these are positive words that can create happiness within the individual who himself utters it and happiness in the in the person who listens or hears but if you use negative words dehumanizing words, stigmatizing words, you reduce your own happiness level. In fact, words that are stigmatizing, that are dehumanizing, that are negative, release what you call stress-induced hormones. Whereas positive words lead to a release of feel-good hormones. In the same way, and in fact even much more, images that are stigmatizing, negative image, negative images, can lead to further dehumanizing of your own self and also of your hearer. 
So let's use pictures that are positive. Well, social media isn't bad. I mean, it has its own, you know, benefits and otherwise. But it depends on what you use social media for. People have done, you know, very good stuff. Um, promoted their goods and services and I mean sent messages across using the same platforms it only becomes a challenge where we are abusing it so for instance well I don't do social media myself or not at all you're not on any social media platform no, I only do whatsapp I don't do social media so um, but um, people spend so much time on social media and you're asking yourself what exactly are they doing? Is it adding so the time spent on social media, is it adding onto your life or it takes away I mean something out of your life? You should be building on what you have and not you know losing because you spend so much time on social media. So social media is good but it can also be bad. So um if people are posting things on social media, you should verify the source. You should verify the authenticity of the information that people are putting out there. I want to say that we shouldn't believe every information that you know you see on social media, especially when people post things about themselves, their achievements and all that. I think that is the major problem when it comes to the youth. So there's unhealthy competition because you want to be like that other person. It shouldn't be so. So yes, yeah, social media has a certain ne positive and negative impact on mental health. But we can use social media positively to promote mental health and other aspects of our lives. The point where you think that it can affect our mental health is uh, at a point, uh, for example, you saying people posting about what they have and the likes, how will that affect your mental health? I, I want you to specifically help us with what we are watching, the posts, the videos. In what context can it contribute to our mental health? Okay, so thank you very much. So in my presentations, I talked about self-esteem when we we're talking about the risk factors for mental health low self-esteem you know sometimes depending on how we've been nurtured when you see these things then you go into a very unhealthy competition with yourself and others so if that happens because you see that this particular person has achieved this they claim so you think that oh you, you haven't gotten there and all that meanwhile you, you, you are rating yourself with these people so then it makes you feel down, it makes you feel depressed and all that. Then there are times that people are comparing you to those people, which also is very, very unhealthy. So again, I would still say that, and I would want to repeat that we need to build in people, especially the young ones, self-esteem, resilience. That is Dr. Caroline Emisa from the Mental Health Authority. Today we are here to talk about mental health reporting and the effect of language and the reports we put out, pictures, images, etc. that impact on our mental health and um, we have come to learn a lot that um, images, especially um, bad images, let me put it that way, that gory images or images that show people probably taking their lives by suicide, so implements they use and all those things, and things people write um, that negatively affect other people all play a role. You know there is a lot of social media presence lately, and the youth especially are in so much into social media. They do a lot of posts, they say a lot, they post both pictures, words, etc. That really impacts negatively on their colleagues or sometimes, yeah, people that they know. Or sometimes strangers, total strangers. So they engage people and they can make you lose your self-esteem, lose confidence and all that. And all these things go to affect our mental health state. So somebody who is always negatively told things about themselves will start losing their self-confidence, self-esteem. They may end up with depression that may proceed into something else and it could even 
suicide so what we are saying is that when we are posting things we should try and post we can say two things we can say something in two different ways we should always look at using the better option when we want to portray things or want to share ideas or say our minds we should be careful what we say which words we use always bearing in mind that somebody else is looking at sometimes it's just by accident you're not even on that page but we have all these pop-ups and all those things on social media and these things trust you me when you keep looking at it when you keep you mentally what we can do to build our resilience is to tell ourselves that what somebody puts out there is not necessarily you what you want to become what you want to be you can form that yourself using positive words for yourself using words that make you feel good all right so these are the views from the aspect and then listening through the commentary from the aspect you will know that Definitely the things people do post on social media, the things you are reading on social media can have an impact on your mental health. So first of all, who is posting? What are you interested in? What are you watching at the end of the day? Who are you trying to look up to? Who are you some way, somehow, whether direct or indirectly, who are you into competition with? Uh, when we put all of this together, there is also an element of self-esteem and self-confidence. So you find a brother posting A, B about him or herself, and then you don't have a solid self-esteem. You begin to wonder, you begin to ask yourself a lot of questions. Uh, you then get into the zone of uh, depression, thinking that you're not doing much and all that. A lot of people are posting beautiful pictures about themselves on social media. And then nobody posts about, I mean, the, the, the bad aspect, the bad event, the bad experience. Uh, on social media, nobody is telling the bad story. Everybody is putting the best of himself or herself on social media. So when you sit back and then you feel that everything is all right, it might not be as you think. So that, as I said, when you don't have a solid self-esteem, then it becomes an issue. You would want to rat race at a point where you don't even have to do that. You get that. So, especially when there's children where, who are very vulnerable, it is very important, as the doctor said, to build their self-esteem and self-confidence in order to be able to deal with uh, some of these images and then videos they see on social media. So, all in all, all I'll say is, when you have confidence, when you have solid self-esteem, you're not being pushed so much especially on what people are posting on social media. If you know your direction and you know where you're heading towards, you know, you just take it cool. You take it easy, you know. The journey is very long. Because... I should train it when you actually be a direction. No, no, no. Why it's them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Co marathon, a wabo pain. Others are man full with the action. Giddy, 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 giddy. From the start. Giddy, giddy. Now the action. Now the generation. Oh, yeah, my show. Others are my bare fifty years, thirty years, and then man a foundation in your papa no. Obu bufum. Others are so it be easy. No, no rush. No giddy, giddy. Man per taking the cool. Others are. And then with that, we believe they will say true. All of them will go through beautifully. My social media be more pressure. My be funny. be more pressure. take it cool underground. You want to join? Brother, sister. On your rush, giddy giddy. No, no, no. Easy. Others are not underground. You know what it's true. Adobe pain. Foundation is strong. Be natural. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Kwame Ofer. It's been social media and then its implication on our mental health. I believe you're going to take a cue from it, learn from it, practice it, and work on your self-esteem and confidence. You'll be fine. Thank you so much.